Ahoy da, Kumi here. Today I'll be building the GK108S, which is Epo Maker's take on the full size keyboard, and the S model is the Bluetooth version. The keyboard came in a two tone yellow and blue box, which is pretty nice, as I was just expecting it to arrive in blank cardboard. I especially like the mascot that is quite prominent, although I couldn't really tell what he was meant to be, as the costume looks like a dinosaur tail, but then it also has reindeer antlers. Anyway, once the box is open, the top item is the instruction manual, which is in both Chinese and English. The board comes wrapped in a plastic sleeve, which also contains a caution note to not force in the switches lest you damage the PCB. There are two colorway options for this board, black and white. I chose the white one as it looked quite clean. Opening the top compartment reveals a braided USB cable that is color matched to the board and a 2-in-1 keycap and switch puller, which is actually decent quality. So I am planning to build this board with silent Bobo U14s, but silent switches make for a terrible typing test, so for the purpose of this video, I'll be trying out the dragon fruit switches by the Keydot company and C3 equals. This is a tactile switch that comes with 63.5 gram spring stock and is hella pretty. Here is the stock sound test. I lube these with Tribosis 3203 on the housing and stem, bag lube the springs with Crytox 105G0 and filmed them with TX Thins. Here is the modded sound test. To disassemble, you flip over the board, flip out the feet and unscrew the four screws. Then use a prowl or old plastic card to disengage the plastic clips and take off the top cover. This reveals a steel plate which is held in place via 1, 2, 3, 10 screws. Once those are all unscrewed, you can remove the plate. The stock stabilizers are kinda terrible, so I replace them with Duroc mount stabs that have been wholly modded and lubed. To remove the PCB, lift it up from the bottom and carefully disconnect the cable that is connected to the battery. The PCB is hot swapped and supports 5 pin switches which is pretty nice for a budget board. It also has north facing LEDs which could cause some interference with certain switches and cherry keycaps so make sure to test your switch and keycaps of choice before proceeding. The case is really hollow which is a major contributing factor to the cheap sound of the board so I filled it with two layers of EVA foam. You can use sorbothane, butyl dampener, silicon mould or a variety of things but I find that EVA foam is a nice balance of cost to effectiveness. To further help the sound I also tape and PE foam modded the board. With that done, it's just a matter of putting the board back together and we reach what is in my opinion the most satisfying part. Putting in the switches. And the keycaps. The keycaps that I have opted for is the XDA Macaroon set as they avoid the interference problem and are quite cute. Overall, I think it turned out pretty well. Do note that the spring ping on the dragon fruit switches are quite prominent even after lubing, so food for thought. I'm still a beginner keyboard enthusiast, so let me know if you have any feedback, whether it be any mistakes I made or things I could have done better. Next build will be up in two weeks. Finally, on to the typing test in three, two, one.